Well, love it or loathe it, the federal election is certainly dominating headlines right now and there's so much going on. So much so it's clear to understand exactly where the parties stand on some issues, where the policy detail is in others and, of course, where many undecided voters will eventually land. We know in the last federal election the official polling, well, they had it wrong. So how do we know who is ahead on the campaign trail at this stage? One person who may have the answer is the founder of Maven Data, Alicia Choi. Dubbed the election whisperer, she uses artificial intelligence to predict future behaviour. In her past, her work analysing data predicted the US election, and she also was able to come up with the three last winners of The Voice. She's joining me now on 4BC Afternoons. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you, Sophie? Yeah, Good. not too bad. Busy time for you right now. Oh, it's always that busy time. I love it and I also dread it, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to share. Okay, so how much data do you actually siphon through to get to an outcome? How does this work? So our data set is the internet and the internet is a very large data set which includes websites, blogs and social media and to give you a scale of how much we analyse when we conduct analysis, it's petabytes. So a petabyte is 10 to the power of 15. So imagine, Sophie, it's one with 15 zeros. Wow. But okay. That's much big, bigger than a peter I'd ever heard of before you just mentioned it as a petabyte. That's for sure. And so it's coming from right across a, a, a number of platforms. And then all of this data will then go into some sort of comparison model. So what we do is we're analysing content that people are engaging with online. And so the beauty about this method is because we don't have to ask people a question, you don't have that um, the bias problem that the opinion polls continually face. Because when people are analysing elections or reading up about news or finding out about anything online, engaging with the world, we get a peek into what they deeply care about by measuring the emotions in the content using AI. Well, especially if it's throwing such a wide, dare I use the word, web. I had mentioned after the um, the debate that was on the Nine Network that they started to share the results of the polling, which wasn't terribly successful, straight away, which meant any polling that came in after that would have been influenced by the first result that was shown. Correct, correct. At the end of the day, though, with any polling, it's, it's, a, it's a, an opinion and you can't theoretically sample everybody in the country. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, operational, it's costly and it, doesn't, you know, it takes too much time. The beauty about what we do is we can do things in real time. So every time something happens in the market and with the election, it's pretty much every hour of the day, mm. we can actually look at the sentiment of the population and then we can gauge where the mood is at and describe, more importantly, what is shifting the sentiment. So if Maven Data is using programs to do that, is it constant, Alyssa? Does it constantly get updated? Well, if I had the endless amount of funds in the world to do this, I would be looking at this uh, every second of the day. <laughs> but because we don't, and, and also we have to be very strategic and it takes a lot of experience in understanding what to ask of the market. So when I'm actually analysing this election, rather than boiling the ocean, what we do is we look at the issues that typically are important for election voting preference. And then we look at specific issues that are coming up based on the election of the year. So in all of that mix, we also look at the parties, we look at individuals, we look at individual seats, and all of that gets analysed so that I can translate what the data is telling me into a story. Well, we know there is still a little while before uh, May 21, but we also know that people have started to head to the polls in vast numbers. Can you give us an indication of what the data is telling you at the moment? Right now, and we are still two weeks out, I'm seeing that there's still a lot of undecided voters. So that means I call it bobbleheading. And the reason is because there's major discontent with the two major parties, both Labor and Liberal. Well, they share a very similar emotional profile, which says to me that there's a lot of disappointment in the current government in general. There's lots of issues that are plaguing governments, such as integrity and ICAC, which are really top of the charts right now, and climate change. So both major parties haven't really cut through on these issues that are burning topics. And these are the issues that are predicted to sway voters. 
tell you what, Alicia, I could have just told you that without the AI. It's spot on to, no, to, I, th- to I think that's spot on to, to, a way, to, to the, certainly the sentiment that I am I'm feeling more broadly as well. So do you have at the moment where you think it's sitting as far as who's gaining momentum? Well, who's gaining momentum are the independents. So we've taken a sample of some key seats that have been talked about in this election. And based on our analysis of the candidates, in particular the independent candidate challenges, they are looking like they're gaining momentum on the key issues that matter right now. So obviously the independents are playing a bigger part in um, New South Wales and Victoria. Not so much and not many names as well known here in Queensland. Does, at the end of the day, it mean that we're likely to see a minority government? It's looking, if I was to call the election and polling was tomorrow, um, granted that we can start polling right now, but if um, the election day was tomorrow, I'm looking at everything in aggregate, right, and I've been tracking it over time. What I'm seeing is that if I was to call it, it would be Labor, but it would be a minority government with the help of independents and Greens. Now, I wouldn't call, I wouldn't count out the Liberal Party at this stage because, Sophie, I see that the Liberal Party is actually the strongest party brand. Mm. But we also have the Scott Morrison factor, which is unfortunately attracting a lot of negative sentiment. So it depends on whether people vote on individual or the party. And so there's a lot of things going on at, at play at the moment. But what I'm going to do is start taking a closer look at a vast number of seats that I believe are going to swing this election. Well, we know that Queensland is going to play a very large part in the outcome. It's the reason why the Prime Minister has chosen Queensland to officially launch the campaign here on Sunday. Uh, There are seats here that are really important to both sides, Alyssa. I agree. So some Queensland seats have been identified uh, in my list, and there's about 30 that I've been um, targeting, and I'll, I'll do a deep dive into each of those and making a call on each of those. So it's actually, uh, at this stage, it's really tough to call, but it's definitely not going to be a Labor landslide, as the polls keep suggesting. OK, well, we'll take that on face value, Alyssa, and we will check in with you again next week to see whether or not, as we get closer to May 21 and maybe more people have visited the pre-poll to put their vote in, if things have become a little bit clearer for you. And I also have a request in from Russ, who's one of our regular listeners, and he said... She would. He would also like to know if you analyse the weekly lotto and can you give him tonight's <laughs> winning numbers? Um, I don't have the power to, um, <laughs> to predict lotto, nor do I have the power to predict who's going to win the NRL grand final or any sporting event or any horse racing event. What I do predict is anything related to uh, people and sentiment that uh, directly influences the outcome, I can <laughs> That. Thank you for I, that question. I imagine that, Alyssa, that's a question you get asked an awful lot. If I had a penny every time I asked. <laughs> It'd be like winning the lotto, right? I would, yes, exactly. It would be winning the lotto. <laughs> uh, that is Alyssa Choi. She is from Maven Data. They have a look at what the sentiment is right across the internet, the questions that are being asked, how often certain things are being searched for, and she can use that as a predictor for something like an election. So we're getting some indications now. Alyssa says she thinks it's going to be ALP with a minority and that the independents are going to be uh, certainly finding themselves in a position where they might be needing to do deals with one of the majors. We'll check in with her again the week of the, uh, the, week of the election and, and get an update. Thanks, Alyssa. Thank you so much, Sophie. Ah, tell me what you think of that. She's certainly saying what a lot of commentators are also echoing. That's likely at this point to be where we land. Do you agree or disagree? One double three eight eighty two. You can text.